Hello, everyone. Welcome to this next session of the eCampus Ontario 2023 Microcredential Forum. My name is Rocio, and I will have the pleasure of moderating this session with Alison Pelly. Alison is a manager of Northwest Business Center, the small business enterprise centers that offers small businesses services across the Kenora and Rainy River districts. She has been in the role for nine years and is always looking for new ways to assist businesses in the region. She is based out of Kenora and travels around the districts to offer workshops, business counseling and works with people who are interested in entrepreneurship. She sits as a co-chair of the Northwest Training and Adjustment Board, the Regional Economic Development Group, and chairs the Services Sector Working Group in Kenora. In her free time, Allison spends time on Lake of the Woods, loves hiking, and spending time with her miniature Dachshund Annie. So today, uh, she is joining us to provide insight into Ontario's Small Business Enterprise Center and how programs like Starter Company Plus provide meaningful business training for small business owners. Um, so without further ado, welcome, Allison. The virtual floor is yours. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for having me today. I'm going to start the session off just with a land acknowledgement. Um, so in the spirit of reconciliation, I would like to acknowledge that Kenora sits within Treaty 3, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and Métis. I'm committed to learning and building relationships and would like to take a moment to recognize the land we are meeting on. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, um, so I'm really excited to be here and to talk to everyone here today um, about uh, entrepreneurship and some of the amazing, um, you know, training opportunities that are existing there for entrepreneurs and uh, maybe, you know, there'll be some new training that comes out of this, this information session here. Um, so like it was mentioned, I am the uh, manager of the Northwest Business Centre. I've been in this role for nine years and I service the Canara Rainy River District. That's a district that's like about the size of France. So um, it's a pretty big area and, uh, uh, you know, really small business and entrepreneurship and those owner operator type businesses are really the backbone bone of our community communities that we have um so yeah it's just uh it's a it's a job that gives me great pleasure i absolutely love it every single day uh and i think i was kind of brought into to be in this realm uh my my family was uh full of entrepreneurs and i actually took a bachelor of applied entrepreneurship program from Mount royal university um out in calgary so that's my my formal training uh background too a little bit about the um, small business enterprise centers. Um, so there's actually 54 of us across the province of Ontario. We're funded through the Ministry of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. And then there's six um, small business enterprise centers actually in the north who are also funded through the Ministry of Northern Development. Um, we're really, you know, the, the service delivery vehicles for entrepreneurship in the province. Um, we're here to support entrepreneurs at any kind of stage of their business. And what's really great is that each small business enterprise center gets to determine, you know, what needs are in the communities that we service and what's going to be, you know, the most beneficial resources or programs that we can then uh, deliver uh, to those, those folks as too. Um, we're also generally the first point of contact. Um, so, you know, if, someone like a bank refers people onto us, business professionals, social supports uh, will refer, refer people to us who are interested in entrepreneurship. Um, the province of Ontario refers people to us, um, economic development uh, libraries, employment, Ontario offices, the startups, people who are interested in exploring entrepreneurship, or those who are, um, you know, looking to expand or buy a business or even think about succession planning uh, as well. We have a lot of resources to support them. Um, just to give you a little bit of snapshot about um, the 54 small business enterprise centers uh, statistics. So, 
Um, this is in 2022, so there's over 300,000 inquiries. So that could just be someone picking up the phone, seeing what's out there, talking to someone about, you know, is entrepreneurship right for me? Um, things like that. And then we really get into a lot of, you know, the nitty gritty that really make this province um you know, you know, full of, of entrepreneurs and things. So um, lots of individual client consultations. That's one of the things we focus on is that one-on-one -on -one business counseling um, service that we have. Uh, lots of new jobs created, over 5,000 businesses started, and we also host a series of events and workshops too. Um, these are just some numbers about entrepreneurship overall in the province. So you know, 72% of high school students want to start their own businesses. 61% of those expect to start their businesses right out of college. Um, and we also found, and, and I can speak from this from my experience too in the areas that so many folks have those side hustles or side jobs uh, where they want to make some extra cash or maybe it brings them some addition to their life that they're really going to enjoy. And, uh, and, and you know, maybe it's different from their, their nine to five or traditional employment that they might have. Um, <clears throat> we also have like a, a rising uh, gig economy and people who are looking at employment in the freelance landscape. Um, and same with uh, our, our immigration in this country as well. We, you know, are welcoming new immigrants and many of them have experience running businesses and there's so much opportunity there, even for succession planning with, you know, our, our aging demographic moving out of the business field and those uh, immigrants coming into Canada uh, as a, as the, potentially they could take over these businesses. Um, and I wanted to just highlight this too, that, you know, 76% of businesses have fewer than 10 employees. That's really notable because what we're seeing, especially, you know, speak, speak to the Kanar Rainy River District is we see a lot of owner, owner operator businesses and, and, you know, over the course of their business life cycle, they might grow and take on a couple more employees, but a lot of them start just with the owner operator uh, type model as well. Um, going into the um, the small business realm, I guess, in, in northwestern Ontario. So, like I mentioned, I service the Kenard Rainy River District. So, uh, it's about, you know, two hours uh, east of Thunder Bay and all the way to the Manitoba border. Um, I'm based in Kenara, so I'm actually only about 30 minutes to the Manitoba border or two hours uh, to Winnipeg. So, um, Winnipeg would be like our closest kind of uh, larger community. Kenara has a population of about 15,000 people. Um, and we are the biggest uh, community within our region. Um, and the Kanar population does double, like we're a tourist community and have a lot of um, uh, seasonal residents as well, where we're, we're kind of all about the lake and about uh, the great outdoors here. Um, so the Northwest Business Center services 18 municipalities uh, and the unorganized area, and then also 26 First Nation communities that are in the region too. Um, we are definitely the, the region's leading business resource. Uh, and I say we, the world, we, the, the business center is actually staffed by one person and it's currently myself. <laughs> um, so we, ha we have utilized different internship programs in the past too, but generally we operate on a one, one person uh, model here too. Um, just to share some statistics with you, so I'm, I kind of like to compare the, the pre-pandemic to maybe the post-pandemic, which we're in now. You can see that inquiries, consultations, businesses started, everything has drastically increased uh, because we're really seeing people during the pandemic in our region anyway shift from you know, maybe they were working from someone and now want the flexibility of being, you know, self-employed or they're finding new opportunities um, or they're able to do more freelance or, or work in, within the, the gig economy as well. Um, you can see here too, so, you know, the growth has been quite, quite noticeable as well. So um, we, can, we can see that in the, the region too. This is just going over some of the key services. So again, I mentioned it's that one-on-one -on -one counseling, which is really important. Uh, we can help people with market research, different resources, uh, mentoring and networking opportunities. And it's really great because again, I service a region. So it's nice when I can even peer match, uh, you know, maybe a business owner from Kanara and one uh, in Dryden who's located an hour and a half away. It, it, it really provides that extra, um, um, help and assistance to the business maybe that's starting out or needs some additional advice when they can actually connect with a peer and, and learn from them too. 
Um, I want to talk about uh, Starter Company Plus. So this is a signature program that actually all small business enterprises deliver uh, across the province. And um, uh, it's been going on, the program has been going on since 2014. And it's really a business training program. So it's about a nine week program where each week there's a series of tasks that an entrepreneur will work on. Um, they then submit it for feedback, feedback's provided. Um, but really what that is all doing is building their business plan behind the scenes. So they're going through every aspect of the plan or everything that they need to think about their business. So that would be, you know, HR, cash flow projections, sales forecasting, company overview, operations, market research, um, you know, a, a need, marketing strategy, uh, everything that's in a business plan, they get training on through this program. This program has been um, a huge success um, in and and part of it is is if they complete the, the training program and meet the the provincial requirements, um, they can actually access a five thousand dollar grant. So there's some really great benefit to these programs, and generally this is used in our area um, by people who run the retail service sector, construction, um, something where there's really not a, any other financial opportunity that might be available to them. The other really great thing about this program is each aspect. So each 54 small business enterprise center um, actually gets to develop your own training and also your own criteria for the type of businesses that maybe you'll allow into the program. Um, so generally here, um, we found with this huge, huge area that it's self-directed. So folks log in through a backend system on our website, and then each week they have all the resources that they need on the website. Um, we also utilize um, Google Docs and the Google, the Google Suite basically to work with the clients so that there's not, you know, tons of emails back and forth, uh, and it's pretty seamless. And at the same time, many of them are are learning how to use, you know, something like Google Suite to help them. Um, you know, as they work forward in their business, that's just going to be another benefit to them too. Um, we, you know, one of the things with this program is that there unfortunately are only seven grants available for the whole region, uh, which which is some is somewhat unfortunate um, because generally we work with at least 70 to 80 people with this business training each year. But the business training will allow um, the entrepreneurs to actually, you know, maybe they're going to go to a bank for a business loan, or they're going to be working with their local community future development corporation, or in the north here, they might be working through an NOHFC application. So as they do this business training, we're setting them up for success um, to be able to access uh, funds from different different funders or different um, loan operators or whatever it might be as well. Um, I do want to mention as well, we were one of two small business enterprise centers that delivered a specific um, Starter Company Plus Indigenous Stream program uh, in 2022, and it was a really great success. Uh, we had 41 applications, um, about 37 people worked on some, for the, some form of the business training, uh, and seven completed the business training, and, and then we awarded five grants through that program too. It was just... Uh, you know, met with overwhelming um, success in our, our region as well. Um, I do want to um, show a really quick video. So I'm just going to stop the share and it will really give you um, a really great sense of um, the region and some of the entrepreneurs that we've been able to, um, to work with. So just let me get this started here for you. The Northwest Business Center has been a huge help for me. They have pushed me to do things that are a little bit harder than I was initially prepared for, and it's been so good. My name is Dana Eid. I'm from Dryden, Ontario, and my business is called Just Die. I'm Jason Duguay, and I'm the owner-operator of Whiskey Delta Metalworks. We create custom handmade knives and small blacksmithing items. My name is Garrett Breer. I live in Kuchiching First Nation, and my business is auto detailing and window tinting. I'm Jason Iber from Kenora. My business is Lake of the Web Design. 
Just Eye is a clothing company that focuses on upcycled garments and accessories, as well as natural dyes and eco prints. Lake in the Web Design is a web development agency that focuses on custom web designs, landing pages, social media videos, anything web related. Everyone's been really happy with their vehicles. So far, I've been working every day. I'm super busy going to markets this summer. I think I already have like 20, so I have to get sewing now. I looked online for agencies that could help me and I found a Northwest Business Center. I'm really glad I took the initiative to apply to this program. They've helped me prepare my business plan. They helped a lot. They're really good to work with. I would recommend it to anybody. I was really happy to find that the Northwest Business Center has an Indigenous stream for this program. It's great to have the support for Indigenous entrepreneurs and businesses. If you're a young entrepreneur in Northwestern Ontario, definitely, definitely reach out to the Northwest Business Center. If you have an idea, take the leap. You never know what's going to happen. It could be great. It all pays off in the end. Hard work pays off. It's been nothing but a fun ride so far. Basically, I'm just super excited. <laughs>、so、that's, um, kind of summarizing the Starter Company Plus program and at the same time giving you a flavor of Uh, the types of businesses that you know, I work with every day、uh, in this position at the business center.、Um, I've got a couple more slides here, just a couple more、uh, training programs that I want to let you know about too.、Um, so, this is our summer company program. This is also like a signature Government of Ontario program.、Um, so, again, each aspect delivers it on behalf of the province and slightly different for each area that we're in. Um, it's a really great program. It's for students who are finishing school in the spring and going back in the fall. So they need to be between the ages of 15 and 29.、Uh, and they then can get a $1,500 grant to start their business. And then they operate over the summer. And then at the end, they can get an additional $1,500 grant、um, uh, in the fall to use for whatever they want. This is a really great kind of intro into entrepreneurship for, for youth. And I, you know, in the nine years that I've been in this, this, this position, I've kind of followed those young entrepreneurs as they've started new businesses or expanded even their current business、um, and just really watched them grow. And they all have entrepreneurship somehow weaved into their lives. So these training programs are just so, you know, so key to them. And I think. You know, I've had students who are, you know, thinking they're going to go into nursing or something and they do this program and they, you know, modify their, their kind of outlook on their, their future career as well. So just a, a really fantastic program.、Um, and then just, you know, again, with the, the large area that we service at the business center,、uh, try to do, you know, as much kind of virtual learning that we can. So, Um, I you know, partner with other organizations to deliver presentations like this where I can talk to youth about entrepreneurship or customer service or whatever it might be.、Um, and I also、uh, host the Digital Main Street and Digital Service Squad for the region, too. So I have two squad members、um, out in the two districts who work with businesses specifically on their、um, technology development within their business. So helping them get websites or social media strategies.、Um, and then this is cool, too. We have a Uh, NWO Pitch It events. That's our second annual. And again, because of the huge area that we service,、um, we, you know, we do this, it's virtually,、um, but like vir in a virtual live session. So again,、uh, very cool to spark that entrepreneurship spirit、um, in our area.、Um, I'm going to, I guess, open it up to questions now. I'll just leave this slide on. This is just a couple、uh, testimonials and a few of the type of businesses that we've worked with. But、um, yeah, thank you so much、uh, for, for listening. Thank you, Allison.、Uh, so we have about 10 minutes for questions. I invite everyone joining us to put your questions on the chat so that we can share them with Allison and talk about them. 
Uh, while our participants think about um, their questions, Allison, uh, first of all, congratulations on the job that you are doing. It is incredible, and it's especially interesting to see the, the significant growth that you've had in the outreach of the program, especially as of the pandemic. So huge congratulations on that. Um, and I had one question. You mentioned that part of the program and a, a big part of the work that you do is peer matching of business owners. So I was wondering if you can talk a little bit more about when you design these micro credential programs that are targeting different audiences and people uh, to develop this business related skills so that they can uh, succeed as entrepreneurs. How do you approach or integrate this peer matching and community opportunities into the design of your programs? Mm -hmm. So um, for the two signature programs, so Starter Company Plus and Summer Company, those that peer matching is actually like mandated by the provincial guidelines for those programs. Um, however, you know, we have kind of say of how it works in the community. So the way that that kind of comes to be is, you know, in in my time at the business center, I've got to work with so many different entrepreneurs and they have different skill sets and different interests. So I really handpick, um, I guess, the peer, the peer mentor person, like the mentor and the mentee relationship and kind of figure out what's going to be the best, the best type of fit. I do also provide guidelines, um, you know, different questions that they can use and ask. And I actually have these, these cards called the mentor deck that I'll give to the men, the, the mentee to then use as kind of like a question, uh, quest, starting questions for their, their mentor as well, just so they have some sort of starting point for conversations. Um, I, I really don't want to meddle with it too much, that peer mentoring. I want them to make it their own relationship. Um, and I want them to know that they can always come back to the business center for resources, um, but that the, the peer mentoring is them developing a relationship. And what I found is those mentor and mentee, they often end up maybe collaborating together in their business or, you know, end up helping each other out more than just that kind of one way um, stream of information too. Interesting. And that's a perfect leeway into our next question, which is uh, you mentioned partnerships at the end of your presentation. You approach it also through peer uh, mentorship and peer matching, uh, but also what type of partnerships are important to make your program be able to scale? Because as you said, um, it's you you're servicing a big area so what mm -hmm. type of partnerships are key what has been your kind of like criteria for successful partnerships so far and what type of partnerships are you looking for because that might resonate with some of our audience uh members who are joining us today mm -hmm. the business center couldn't exist without partners because like i've mentioned it's a huge service area and there's only one person who's staffed um so you know, and we have some pretty lofty targets with the the province as well that we have to meet. So the the partners that I work with are, you know, the economic development offices, the chamber of commerce and commerce in the different communities, um, the, you know, almost anyone that I can network with, I do in order to raise awareness about the programs and have information. Um, I would say, you know, future partnerships and opportunities would be um, you know, again, there's only, there's only one of, one of me. So the partnerships is, is really, if anyone else can provide some of that kind of support or potentially even funding partners, right. Would be, would be something that would be very useful, but without partners, this program wouldn't even exist. We would, wouldn't have the referrals of the clients, you know, we refer them on to other programs and stuff too. So yeah, it's so key. That it's interesting that because, as you were talking about how the participants who could successfully complete the programs that you uh, are offering have access to different funding opportunities uh, and grants at the end of the program, you were making me think that uh, funding, it would, would also be an important metric for us to track when we speak about the impacts of micro-credentials. Because we usually talk a lot about our, our micro-credentials are actually helping the learners get into jobs, get employed, or being able to progress in their already um, employment tracks. But I was thinking that it's not only about pathways 
in getting people into programs, into jobs, as we're framing, but also into funding opportunities for those who are taking the entrepreneurship stream. So I was wondering if you would like to elaborate more on that relationship between potentials that you see between micro credentials and funding opportunities. Yeah, um, you know, like I mentioned, we've built the the starter company plus program specific to the business center has been built so that people can can do that program and then be able to use it, you know, wherever they might be able to access maybe another grant or funds. And it's really recognized by those partners like the lenders or the the other um, the the funders who are giving away different grants and stuff that require like the 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 business plan and the, like the idea to be fulsome. Um, so it's one thing we really, you know, even in my realm, I'm thinking I probably don't even like push it as much as I do, because it is sometimes hard to go back and collect those stats or that information from folks to determine what they used it for. But we have a client who did the starter company plus training with them, uh, with us, sorry, we were able to give them just like a letter saying everything was complete. Um, and this person's been able to access over a million dollars of different funding and um, and from investors and stuff too, using this information, you know, that they apply to their business to then, then get there, so. Wow, that is, that's incredible. That's excellent. Uh, we have one more question in the chat, which says, uh, Monica is asking us, how is the evaluation done for the successful completion of this programs as this are so focused on hands-on experience? Interesting question. Yeah, so um, the way that we consider them if they're done is if they've if they've basically stayed engaged with the training program up to a certain point. So I believe it's week six, it's um, that they have to be able to have done mostly everything in their business plan um, to be able to be completed. Um, generally, we always, those people that are that far are really um, engaged. So they're, so they're taking the feedback um, that has been given to them. They're updating their information. They're doing more research or whatever it is. So that's how we do track them. Um, and then if they've, you know, in order to even apply to the grant, they have to have everything completed and um, uh, completely done. I don't know if that answered the question. I might have gone a little in the circle, but um, that's kind of how we track the, that program specifically. Perfect. It answered it to me, but if our participant wants to put a follow up <laughs> question on the chat, that's also OK. We have another question from our CEO, Robert Luke. He says, uh, thank you for a great presentation. It is really nice to see the diffusion of entrepreneurship. Can you talk a little bit about feedback uh, you have received and how you have integrated this in any changes to programming? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the biggest thing back in 2014 when we launched this program is we thought we were going to do it like every other aspect across the province that we were going to have, you know, in-person training or, you know, virtual training. We were already, you know, using, I think, Zoom before it existed. We were using GoToMeeting. But anyway, um, so we started the first session doing it in person and realized that that doesn't work for entrepreneurs or, or, you know, people with entrepreneurial mindsets, they might want to work on their business plan at two in the morning, or click and watch a video, or, you know, you know, people learn so many different ways. So we really, the program has always had that same, um, you know, desired outcome that we want them to have a complete business plan and, and be able to use it wherever they go for funding. Um, but really what's mo morphed the most is how we actually deliver it. So it's more easy and accessible for those that want to take part in it. So um, even the most, like the last kind of thing we did was have everything on the, the back end of the website where folks can just log in and have access to everything. Um, you know, it started out again in person, then it was like we were mailing people binders that we were printing and putting together. Then it was, you know, weekly emails. And then now, you know, so it's kind of changed to meet uh, whatever the client uh, or business or entrepreneurs is, is needed. Well, a good adjustment of that ways of working and living need to align with or what well, ways of learning, sorry, need to align with ways of working and living. Yeah. Um, so we have time for one more question that we do have in the chat. Uh, they're asking us, are there common skills gaps that you see in program participants so far? The biggest one that I do see in, in our region too, um, again, we have a very, we have an older demographic here and then kind of a younger demographic 
um, that we generally see. So what I do see is there's technology gaps um, that probably are one of the biggest hurdles in terms of, you know, we have clients who don't even have an email address, but yet they're trying to, you know, compete in this digital world. So that's probably one of the biggest um, skill gaps that we see. So it's, you know, e computer literacy would be uh, one, of, one of the gaps that might be there for, for our older demographic. Excellent. I'd say that's one that stands out to me the most. Um, and one of the things we do see in the North too um, is sometimes businesses have like struggle with scaling up in their business. So, you know, finding new markets, you know, like I said, like Kanara, we're here, we're two hours to Winnipeg, we're an hour and a half to Dryden, which is about a quarter of the size of Kanara. So it's like, where does a Kanara business go to expand? So that's one of the things that we face in the North too, is the scalability of, of business. Digital literacy and scalability. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I am getting the warning that we are at time. So Alison, thank you so much for sharing with us your experience and your insights. I hope this was really interesting and useful for our audience today. And it was a pleasure joining us today. Thank you so much for joining the session. Thank you so much.